Right, everyone, 31st of October. <coughs> Pumpkin. Funny looking fella. Two funny looking fellas. Um, but that's all of the Halloween chat that you're getting for today because we're not talking pumpkin. We're talking pumping. Livingston, Celtic, 3 0. Never mind. Patter aside, uh, it was a pumping yesterday in West Lothian, a ground that we've struggled at so often uh, over the last, what, four, five, six seasons. And yesterday it was a doddle. Easy, 3 0. We missed a penalty, we missed other chances as well. Livingston created. Uh, I was about to say zilch there. I don't know why I would ever use that word. They created nothing, maybe one chance in the first few minutes from the, the free kick when Nubly forced Hart into a save. But other than that, nothing. It was about as routine a match as you will ever see Celtic have. John and Asim were on El Reaction, which is Spanish for the reaction yesterday. Check that out if you fancy it. I won't blame you if you don't know, given that the... The star man wasn't there, but he's back now. Um, here are the players celebrating after yesterday's win with Kyogo once again leading the way. And a very pleased Celtic support also enjoying themselves. I came back last night, got back quite late and actually re-watched the game from start to finish. Uh, I thought we were really impressive, actually. I came away from the game yesterday thinking it had been like a a professional performance, a clinical performance, but I think the performance was actually a lot better than that. The way we moved Levy from side to side throughout the match, real good kind of one-touch passing at times, quick passing on a frankly awful surface. I mean, plastic pitches, I will never not moan about them in the aftermath of these games. But I thought we, we coped really well with everything thrown at us yesterday. Livy were at it yesterday, and by at it, I mean trying every trick in the book from every goal kick, basically, in the first half. And they had, like, so many of them. The keeper and the centre half would stand next to each other for ages, kind of as if they were, like, viewing the pitch and coming up with some master plan for how they were going to score a goal. Uh, except they wouldn't score a goal and they didn't score a goal and then the defender would just kind of run up 20 yards and the keeper would just launch it long and they did that every single time and it annoyed me at the time, at the game. You can actually see me on Sky two minutes into the match with my arm out like that, frustrated at the time it was taken and it's still winding me up but they're actually fair enough doing it because teams aren't going to make the game free-flowing because that obviously plays into our you know, way of playing. So teams are obviously going to make it as difficult as possible. Um, but they were at it. Also, when I was re-watching the game, uh, you may have noticed this, after four minutes, uh, the Levy goalkeeper kicks the ball straight out of play from one of the aforementioned goal kicks. Someone on the Levy bench, who the ball arrives at, then gives the ball to Anthony Ralston quickly, and Ralston takes a throw. And the cameras pick up David Martindale, the Levy manager, yelling at whoever it was on the bench and giving it the old, you know, use your head, concentrate sign. So it was so evident that Levy were doing everything yesterday to try and make the game bitty and stop start and difficult for Celtic and... I just didn't really feel it worked, to be honest. I thought we dealt with it all really well yesterday. Um, really stop start game, I felt, throughout. And that's probably clouded my judgment a little bit coming away from the game and why I felt it maybe wasn't quite as good a performance as I actually was, having rewatched the game. Willie Collum was frustrating. Uh, VAR was frustrating. Just taking so much time. Um, the amount of times we'd go to take a quick free kick and, and Willie Collum would pull the play back and then put his hand in his ear as if he was listening to VAR and frustrating and Ange was clearly getting frustrated and the crowd was getting frustrated but um, as I say, as I keep saying, we dealt with it all really well and I'm just really, really impressed and proud of the team yesterday for the way we went to a ground where we've struggled badly in recent years and were just so good Um I think we can play even better as well, which is kind of scary. Anyway, we got the early goal yesterday. I felt that was really important. Kyogo has scored eight league goals in nine starts so far this season. And it's actually not really nine starts because one of the starts was a two-minute appearance in the derby against Rangers. So 
yeah, it's kind of eight starts and eight goals, which is just mightily impressive. Um, that's the first thing. While he struggled in the Champions League, that domestic record is exceptional. And of those eight league goals, six of them were the first in matches. And I think that's been a real theme of our league season so far, is scoring early goals. They just completely change the match. They relax us. They mean the opposition have to rip up their game plan, etc. And it's uh, it's been really, really impressive so far from Celtic in the league. All the way back to the opening day of the season, Aberdeen at Celtic Park. Stephen Wells scores after three minutes. Uh, following week, Ross County, okay, Kyogo, 48 minutes. It takes us a bit longer. Following week, Kelly, Kyogo, seven minutes. After that, Hearts, Kyogo, 13 minutes. Dundee United, Kyogo is a wee theme emerging here. 15 minutes at Tannadice in the 9-0 win. And it was actually earlier, if you remember, Joe Hart had quite a bad injury um, that took, I think, five or six minutes to treat. So, you know, it's probably within 10 minutes of actual football that day. The Derby, Abada scores after eight minutes. St Mirren, bad day. We don't score at all. We lose 2-0. Motherwell at home, Kyogo, 15 minutes. St Johnson, uh, 42 minutes. It was an own goal. Hibs, James Forrest, nine minutes. Hearts, James Forrest, 14 minutes. And yesterday, Kyogo, nine minutes. So 12 games in the league so far, and in nine of them, we've scored within 15 minutes. That's pretty amazing. I mean, that's that's incredible. And it just opens up the game so much for us. So I felt that was really important yesterday. Um, it's something to keep an eye on and, and you know, matches to come in the league. How quickly do Celtic get their goals? We just start these games so fast nowadays. It's brilliant to see. Uh, right, okay, moving away slightly. Got something we need to get going here. And this is where we're going to harness the, the true power of of 67 Hail Hail, our fan base, and also our brothers over at GigPod. Now, I've been chatting to that um, other man with me there, Stevie, who, of course, is from GigPod, who is the architect of what we're about to talk about, this. I wanna, I wanna VAR. I wanna, I wanna. So I want to see how immense the 67 Hail Hail and the GigPod fan bases are. Our challenge for this season, so this whole season, is to get that chant belted out at Celtic Park at some stage. So spread the word and the next time we're awarded a penalty or a goal by the legends at Clydesdale House, get that sung loud and proud. We'll know you're a 67 Hail Hail fan and over time momentum will be gathered, new followers will be found and it will be chanted loudly at Celtic Park. It's almost kind of like a, a test to see how big the 67 Hail Hail fan base is. And if you don't go to games, just sing it at home, I guess. And um, By the way, on that penalty, Yakimakis and penalties against Livingston don't go. You almost certainly know this by now, but yesterday's miss against Livy was exactly a year on from his other miss against Livy, a far more costly one. Uh, last season, I suppose not costly in the grand scheme of things, and he's certainly made up for it since then, and a hell of a lot more, uh, but yeah, Yakamakis and Livingston and penalties don't seem to go, to be honest, Celtic and Livingston and penalties don't seem to go, because we also missed one last season through McGregor uh, away at the Tony Mack uh, in that 3-1 win, so the next time we get a penalty against Livingston, uh, we'll, we'll probably miss it, I guess. Sorry, I was trying to think of something witty there, but it just wasn't coming. Uh, right, your comments. Uh, sorry, comment. We're a bit short for time today as we've got plenty of other stuff to get through and I need to pack for Spain. Uh, congratulations, Patrick Barton. You made the cut. You are the one and only comment today and you are saying confident and patient game from Celtic. For me, Moy was man of the match by a nose. Superb performance by Taylor. Well done, everyone. Hail, hail. Thought Moy was, was great yesterday too. Just really controlled that game. I think he gives Hatate that freedom to move forward. Um, and just always knowing that, that Moy is there. And I've spoken about this before, I think after the Motherwell game. While McGregor is out, I think the balance in that midfield with O'Reilly, Moy and Hatate is is really, really nice, and I think you're getting good games out of all of them, 
at the moment. Um, but Moy for me yesterday, like some really nice passes, really kind of intricate passes in tight areas and just uses the ball so well, never rushes into a daft pass. Well, often just take his time to find an even better one. Loved watching him. Uh, also thought Abelgard was neat and tidy when he came on. Greg Taylor was was obviously excellent. I'm not convinced his goal was was a screamer like some people are making out. I mean, the goalkeeper is, is abysmal, goes right through his legs. Um, but he knows how to celebrate Greg Taylor. Brilliant celebrations whenever he scores. And another great performance from him. He is just playing so well at the moment. Uh Thought Forrest was a threat too. He could have scored in the first half. He should certainly have scored in the second half after that horrendous mistake from the aforementioned goalkeeper Hamilton. And yeah, we, we move on. Really good job yesterday. This is what the league table looks like. Still a four-point lead at the top for Celtic. And it's just that St Mirren game so far that hasn't gone to plan. 11 wins from 12 is incredible for me. And imagine we get to the the World Cup break having only dropped points in one game. It would be an incredible start to the season when you consider all the other stuff that's going on as well. So, um, yes, Celtic, I can't fault you today, I'll be honest, um, and I try some days. Uh, just briefly, reports last night linking us with Vissel Kobe's 22-year-old centre-back, Yuki Kobayashi. The chat seems to be that this is very much real, uh, very much is going to happen. Seems very much like uh, the signings of Maida, uh, Hatate, and Gucci. This time last year, I think we started to get word that these signings were going to happen. So seems very much like this is going to happen. Will he be the only Japanese player to come in? Will we look at others? Uh, I know what you really want now is the Sam Robson scoop. Remember, Sam was a guy who we had on the channel chatting about uh, the likes of Maida, uh, Hatate and Gucci uh, just about a year ago, just shy of a year ago. Um, we don't have Sam actually on in person, but I did send him a message on uh, Twitter last night, that wonderful uh, app that is uh, certainly not going to the wall. But anyway, that's another story. Um, this is what he said. Not one I saw coming. Left-sided centre-back plays exactly the way Ange would want one to play. Good with his feet, a lot of experience for a 22-year-old. Came to prominence at 20 on loan at a rubbish Yokohama FC side, but stood out there, was their key man at the back. They were a lot worse the following season without him. Spent last season as a backup to Vermalen, pretty decent guy to learn from. Played 31 times this season in a Kobe side which was battling relegation for most of the season. Him and Kikuchi made a lot of errors to begin with but have settled in the last couple of months to end well. He'd probably be fourth choice right now at Celtic but good potential if Ange can harness it. So as I say, it seems very much like this is going to happen. Obviously we'll get Sam on for a deeper dive uh, if it does indeed happen. Um and yes, we're, we're into a new week. You may have noticed that. We are bound for Madrid. Well, I certainly am. Uh, tomorrow, not quite sure where tomorrow's video will be coming from and when it will be happening, but we will have a wee scoop on Madrid and what the game means to them uh, on Wednesday night. Lots of interesting stuff there. So uh, join us this week. Get subscribing if you've not done it yet. As we now go, I think, for 34 thousand subscribers plenty of content this week we'll have laughter uh, some booze informative chat and of course three points from madrid chat to you tomorrow